Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Brian London. You're the publisher of Gold Newsletter. It's the Gold Newsletter, and then of course you're the founder of the New Orleans Investment Conference. Is that correct? Well, I'm not the founder, but I am the host and producer uh, of the conference. I started at the conference in 1985. It had already been going on for for over 10 years at that time. Okay, so since 1985, that's a significant period of time. And of course, you have an amazing track record for attracting some of the brightest minds in the world, specifically specifically on gold, silver, and base metals. Would you agree that that's correct, or have you expanded from there? Uh, yeah, we, we do cover every investment sector. We start off in geopolitics and narrow down to drill down to every investment sector. We cover uh, the economic trends, everything that affects every major investment sector. But of course, Jim Blanchard started the conference in 1974 as a gold event. And we've always had that thread kind of running through the conference throughout the years and decades. And we are known as the preeminent event for um, metals and mining stocks, especially in a bull market atmosphere like we have going on right now. Okay, well, you're saying we have a bull market in that sector right now, but we're not seeing it at the junior level yet, Brian. When should we anticipate some positive impact to the exploration market, for instance? Well, I, I think very soon, and I think as we speak, uh, quite literally, we have seen some impact. Um, I, I think this is just a real sweet spot for investors. The new gold bull market has been confirmed by gold moving, by the big mining stocks offering leverage, and silver offering leverage. So it's it's a confirmed bull market move, yet there are still lots of juniors that have begun to move but not have not yet put in the really big moves yet. You know, the kind of multiplying three, four times in value moves that we typically expect in this kind of a, an environment, this kind of a bull market. So it's a great opportunity. You know the bull market's there, and there's lots of opportunities. So investors really need to take advantage of this for their own sakes uh, and, and really get involved in the sector and, and find the best opportunities. Well, I personally love the, uh, the blurbs you send out with the gold newsletter. They're always uh, very well written. And I'm going to put you on the spot here, Brian, and ask you to highlight a couple of companies that will be either presenting or just attending the New Orleans Investment Conference that you're personally watching. Well, I'm personally watching a couple of uh, plays that I'm personally invested in, or a few plays that I'm invested in. Two in silver, Aftermath Silver is a, is a fairly early stage. It has moved a good bit. A lot of people are watching it, but it's got two good silver projects that it will be uh, uh, drilling on I, over the next year or so and, and going to a resource stage. So I like that company. It's an early stage silver company. I like New Pacific Metals. It's also a silver company that's got a tremendous project. It's pretty well advanced right now in terms of market cap, but it could end up being one of the world's largest silver deposits in Bolivia. And, uh, and I like Great Bear. Um, I have that as a hold in our uh, portfolio right now, but it's already up, already up 26 times in value from our alert service recommendation in late 2017. So that's kind of a sign that uh, the big winners are already being produced right now in this bull market. Yes, but arguably isn't that kind of an exception when you look at the vast landscape of juniors right now that really haven't moved, Brian? That's correct. They haven't moved. And I think that makes uh, that creates an opportunity, really. Um, you know, we see typically that the juniors are the last to move but in gold and silver, but they move the most. And then as the bull market progresses, you get these kind these other ancillary bull markets because investor attention is focused on the sector. You'll get uh, uranium stocks moving. You'll get, as you know, strategic metals and rare earths and all these other subsectors getting attention as we go along. So if this is anything like the early 2000s, and I think it shows all the signs of being just that, then we will have another you know, five to seven years of a tremendously positive uh, 
upturn in gold and silver, but also lots of other opportunities emerging. And of course, I just want to draw you back to the the reference to the impact of geopolitical issues on markets overall. One of the many reasons that I value the New Orleans Investment Conference is you have so many wonderful speakers that really talk about how these work with our portfolios. Can you comment a little bit about this? Yes, we've always featured that. Uh, we've always talked about geopolitics because they drive really everything. We've always talked about economics. We've had uh, you know, everybody from Margaret Thatcher to Alan Greenspan to Ayn Rand to on and on and on. Uh, this year, we have Stephen Moore, who was recently nominated and had to withdraw his, uh, his nomination for the, the Fed. A uh, very well-known economist and free market economist. We've got Kevin D. Williamson, who's kind of a, a bad boy of political, geopolitical commentary out there. He's kind of the Doug Casey on another level of, of commentary. We, of course, have Doug Casey back again. Uh, we have Peter Bookvar, Dennis Gartman, Rick Rule, uh, Peter Schiff, uh, going on and on and on, plus just about every expert out there on metals and mining. And and what happens is a lot of these speakers tend to uh, save their best recommendation, their hottest picks for the New Orleans conference to unveil them. Um, and it's always proven over decades to be the best place to find these kinds of opportunities, especially in the junior sector. Well, let me just give you a minute to promote the New Orleans Investment Conference. Is it too late for us to sign up? I mean, are there any hotel rooms left? I'm personally booking my flight today. Yes, there are hotel rooms. It's starting to get a little tight. We still have a $400 savings, early bird savings in place, but that will be expiring in a few weeks. So uh, there's opportunities. Sometimes you're, you're, you're smart to point that out. Sometimes the hotel books uh, sells out. Sometimes the entire city sells out at the time of our event. But we do have rooms right now, and we do have the early bird discount still in place. And it is November 1st through the 4th, so you will have to make your, your plans fairly soon. Well, speaking again, I want to just stay on the geopolitical. I think we need to have you on more regularly, Brian. I have too many questions for you. We, of course, have been watching a Petition 232 and how it's kind of evolving with the current uh, task force reviewing sustainability issues and, in particular, mm -hmm. the uranium market. Can you comment at all on that and which way you think it's going to go? Yeah, I think there'll be some accommodation for the domestic producers. I don't think uh, it, it's the one issue where where Trump has not turned toward protectionism or tariffs or, or some kind of a quota. But I think there will be something evolving out of that. Um, in general, though, one of the things that that issue is kind of obscured is an improvement, uh, somewhat improvement, but still a, a significant improvement in the outlook for uranium over the past few months, but everybody's been looking at 232 as a uh, a kind of a rescue for the sector, and uh, and so we did have a downturn when that didn't turn out as everyone expected, but I do think it's going to end up being positive uh, with that working group coming up with something to help the domestic producers. And of course, we've always been the top ranked site in the world in the coverage of the rare earths market. Uh, who will you have speaking particularly on that topic at this event? Well, rare earths, strategic metals. Uh, we have Simon Morris, who's, uh, you know, as you know, is one of the best in the world uh, on that area. We also have all of our metals and mining uh, newsletter writers who cover the area, and myself included. Uh, and frankly, we'll be leaning on you for your advice and input on that sector, because as you say, in, Investor Intel is is uh, longstanding, has a longstanding reputation as providing some of the best information uh, on that sector for investors. Well, Brian, I look forward to seeing you and your team. I know you'll be very busy. And, and personally, I'm looking forward to hearing Doug Casey speak. So thank you so much for having us again this year, Brian. We look forward to seeing you. Thanks, Tracy. Looking forward to seeing you down here very soon.